wanted to wish you luck for uh, this weekend. Definitely, I'm running the uh, 21k tomorrow. Oh, wonderful! So I'm hoping for a PR. Um, goal is like an hour and thirty. So. Yeah. The hard thing about the trail races is it's hard to to put a time to a distance exactly. because, especially over here, it's super twisty and turny. And it's very important, so it's not that easy to, to, to have a good time. I mean, some races are kind of open, it's easier to go faster. How long have you been preparing for uh, this weekend's race? A lifetime. A lifetime, yes. <laughs> no, I did my first um, triathlon when I was 14 years old, and before that I was a, I was a runner. Um, so I went to the Sydney Olympic Games and the Olympic Games for a triathlon. And I started doing extra Richmond here in 2001 was my first um, extra ever. So preparing for this race basically starts in January. So I started training January. You go January, February, March, April, you'll do preparation base training. And then in May the, the racing started. So you do a training bunch and then you do a bunch of races together. You can't, you can't quite mix training and racing at the same time. Sorry. And how does the Richmond Xterra race compare to all the other round? Well, Richmond is my favorite Xterra of all the Xterras because the, the course is uh, quite technical and um, it's a lot of fun. It's all downtown, so there's a lot of spectators. And it's probably because it's my first Xterra ever. That's why I enjoy it so much. Um, also, the course suits me because it's kind of flat. It's got a few short little climbs, but nothing like like Colorado or some of the other states. So this course suits me pretty well, and uh, it's, like I said, it's my favorite. Have you considered doing uh, any Ironmans or any I ultra running? I'm 35 now, and I uh, Still young. I don't know. I don't want to do. I don't want to suffer so long. I like racing often, yeah. like, I'd like to race every weekend, but if you did a, an 8 hour Ironman, you can only do 3, maybe maybe 4 in a year. With Exeter, I mean, you do on every, not every weekend, but I mean, I do 12, 13 races in a summer. And uh, I just enjoy the short training more and the technical aspect of it, so even though I think I may be good at Ironman, it doesn't appeal to me and I do take match for, the, for those athletes, so I think it is, it is the ultimate draft on So, how long have you been wearing the Lego socks? What do you have to say about that? <laughs> um, yeah, it's my third year in the Bolivia so socks, and it's, uh, it's, it's been a, a great pleasure. Um, uh, yeah, the relationship—it's actually a long story, but it started. I broke my um, I broke my wrist there a couple of years ago racing, and uh, I lost a lot of sponsorship, and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to come back. A lot of income that year as well because I didn't finish my races, and um, they got heard about this and they said we're going to help this guy. And um, they helped me when other people didn't want to. So since then the, the, the relationship has been really good. And I think it's a great mock partnership. I'm interrupting you. My Lego socks are made in South Africa, and I'm from South Africa, but I compete in, in America. So um, the product is first class. It's, to me, it's always a big honor to be associated with them because I go to running stores or expos and go, oh, we love the Lego. And the moment they buy their first pair of the Legos, they never use the different sock again. They really become big. And even though the marketing campaign is not big and it's not a huge company, the SOC is um, and also the company for its moral values and what it does for um, uh, charity and, and those things is, is pretty special. <laughs> well, I thank you for your time yeah. and uh, good luck this weekend. Definitely. Cool. Thank you very much. Blow the competition right out the water. So <laughs> Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing and uh, be, uh, hopefully be like you someday. <laughs> if I start getting into it, I need to work on my swimming too. But, uh, good luck this Well, this is the easy one swimming wise because the swimming is pretty short. Oh, good. Even though it's kind of technical because there's a bit of current, so you have to anticipate the current. But as far as swimming goes, this is one of the shorter ones. I wanted to be there one. Because there's a bit of run in the middle as well, you know? Right. So it's a good one to start with. Yeah. What, which website is this? Uh, ThinkFastMoveFaster.com think fast, fast. Okay. And, uh, I'd love the autograph as well. Yeah. Do you mind if we get a picture as well? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Great. So where does the Think Fast come in? Uh, well, we have an energy supplement called Diesel, and we were, we hired an advertising company out of Florida to create a new uh, design logo and wrapper for the package. Yeah. And we wanted to play around with our messaging. We thought it was outdated, and so we thought about the phrase "Think Fast, Move Faster," yeah. uh, because our product gives you instant energy and focus. 
is, but we wanted a tagline that would reach out to the masses, and we thought Think Fast, Move Faster was a great thing, and we developed that into a website where we wanted to bring together all athletes of all sports under one community on the internet. It's sort of like Facebook meets ESPN, meets, uh, you know, not only professional players, but also, you know, amateur athletes, you know, people that are emerging in the business and that's what we created and yeah. since so then, it's like a social network it's a social network yeah it's kind of like a MySpace uh, slash Facebook but yeah. essentially for all athletes of all sports oh yeah definitely and we will put you on the website immediately <laughs> we would love to feature you can you send me a link of course definitely um, I can contact I mean, contact from uh, Carol and uh, we can hook up from there yeah.